Hello and welcome to another tutorial video. My name is Ian Green from enjgreenpiano.com and it's a pleasure to be with you today as we look at a piece called Sonatina in G Major, the first movement, written by Thomas Atwood. And this piece is found in the Piano Literature Book One, um, which is published by Nancy and Randall Faber. And this piece is a wonderful piece where we practice broken chords. Now we call this the Alberti bass because what we do is we play the left hand pattern of a chord, which is traditionally a three note chord, but we play it so that the thumb is repeated a few times extra to give some uh, smoothness and um, clarity to the left hand accompaniment or the left hand chords. Now, sometimes the left hand chords are also played as solid chords. So in either case, with either the broken chords or solid chords, the important thing is to play smoothly and quietly so that the right hand melody can be heard clearly. Now, there's a very nice melody as well in the right hand where you'll hear some scale patterns. So this piece is kind of interesting because it's a bit of a longer piece, but at the same time, there are a lot of really great things that, that take place in it. Now, something that's interesting with this piece as we can do as a demonstration, and so there are two different sections. There's a main melody. call that section A. So that's the first eight bars of the piece from bars one to eight. Now from bar nine all the way through to basically bar 19, there's a completely new section which we could call section B and then section A returns again. Um, there's also a transition section. So sometimes musicians say that the second section or section B is from bar nine to 16. And then there's a transition that brings us from bar 16 to 19, and then we come back to the main melody again in bar 20. Here's what the transition sounds like starting from bar 16, the second line of page two. So you can hear how it's a lot of the same notes as we move towards. the main return of the theme. So that's something important to think about is how there are two different parts to this piece, um, but the main theme returns later. So we call this binary form, where we have the first section, section A, which comes back later, um, and there's a section B as well. So we have this as a rounded binary, section A, then section B, and then section A again. <laughs> So that's a bit of a, of a fast forward, I guess, through the form of the piece. All of these things are important to be said. So when you hear how the piece works, you can hear where all the different sections are. So here, how, here, here is how the piece sounds. So you can hear how the, the main theme returns, plus there's also a distinct middle section. Now something that's important with a piece like this, where there's a lot going on, is it's important to practice each section on its own. So you wanna take a look at um, section A, which is bars one to eight. We'll work on that for a little while first. Then you start on bars nine to 16 and see how the second theme, uh, section B, works itself um, and has some interesting ideas. And then combine both of those sections together. 
then after that, you can work on the return of the main theme and the transition into that as well, too. So that helps then instead of thinking about starting right from the beginning and playing the whole piece hands together, you want to break it up into certain smaller sections to help manage combining the hands and seeing how the fingering works. So have some fun as you're practicing this piece and look forward to seeing you for another video next time. My name is Ian Green from ianjgreenpiano.com. It was a pleasure to be here with you today. Have fun as you're practicing. Please like and subscribe to this channel and we'll see you next time. Thank you and take care. Thank you.